Hello friends, this video on neat nuclei is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 5. The binding energy per nucleon of lithium and helium nuclei are 5.60 mega electron volt and 7.06 mega electron volt respectively. In the nuclear reaction, the value of energy Q released is Okay, so here, first of all, let us try to find out the total binding energy for lithium and the total binding energy for helium. So that is something which we need to find out first. Okay, so the binding energy values which are given are per nucleon, right? So let us first talk about helium. So binding energy for helium would be how much? So in helium, how many nucleus do you have? So you have four nucleons, right? The binding energy for helium for one nucleon is 7.06. So we will multiply it by four because we have four nucleons. So four into 7.06 mega electron volt. So this is the binding energy for one helium, right? But here in this equation, we have two helium. So this will further get multiplied by two. Similarly, binding energy for lithium. So in lithium, we have seven nucleons. So per nucleon, it is 5.60. So seven multiplied by 5.60 mega electron volt. So what would be energy released? So energy released would be equal to total binding energy of the two helium. That means two into four into 7.06 minus the total binding energy for this lithium that is minus 7 into 5.60. So now when you calculate this value it comes out to be 8 into 7.06 minus 7 into 5.60. This is equal to 56.48 minus 39.20 which is equal to approximately 17.3 mega electron volts. So D would be the right option. Question number 6. A radioisotope X with a half-life 1.4 into 10 to the power 9 years decays of Y which is stable. A sample of the rock from a cave was found to contain X and Y in the ratio 1 is to 7. The age of the rock is. Okay. So in this case, the sample which have been found contains both X and Y. Right? So let us assume that the mass of the sample is M. Right? Now this M contains both X and Y. So this M is basically mass of X plus mass of Y. Now in the question it is given that mass of X is to mass of Y is equal to 1 is to 7. So that means MX by MY is equal to 1 by 7 or 7 MX is equal to my. Now we have to calculate what portion of this m is mx. Right? So that you know we are able to identify the age of the rock. Correct? So let us try to find that out. Okay. So here we can say mx plus 7mx because we know that mx plus my is equal to m. So mx plus 7mx is equal to m or we can say mx 8mx is equal to m or mx is equal to 1 by 8m. So what does this mean? This means that 1 8th of m is left which is not decayed right which is present in this sample that means that is not yet decayed because here in this question x is gradually decaying to y. So the amount of x which is present in this sample that shows how much x has not yet got converted into y. So that much amount of x is still left undecayed. So we can say that 1 by 8 m is still left not decayed. So that means we basically started with m and then now it is 1 by 8 m. So initially it was m. So n naught was m and now the value of n is 1 by 8 m because 1 by 8 m is left undecayed. Right? So th this, this, this integration has happened. Correct? Now how many half lives would have taken to convert 1 m 
1 m to 1 by 8 m so now in we can we can find this out very easily now from 1 to 1 by 2 would have happened in one half life so from 1 by 2 further half of it would be 1 by 4 further half of 1 by 4 would have been 1 by 8 so basically it would have taken 1 2 and 3 half lives so in 3 half lives it would have got converted from 1 to 1 by 8 correct so that means the time taken for for conversion of m to 1 by 8 m is nothing but 3 half lives and how much is 3 half lives so in this question it is given that half life is 1.4 into 10 to the power 9 so 3 half lives would be 3 into 1.4 into 10 to the power 9 years that is 4.2 into 10 to the power 9 years so this much time would have taken for conversion of m to m by 8 and this is basically the time or this is basically the age of the rock, correct? Because to, in today's date, the rock has X. So that means today's date, the rock has 1 by 8 of M. So from initial days, M would have taken 4.2 into 10 to the power 9 years for this disintegration to happen, which shows that the age of the rock is 4.2 into 10 to the power 9 years. Correct. So I hope you understood the concept. So here, since x is getting converted to with converted to y, that means with time, m x is reducing and m y is increasing, right? Because gradually x is getting converted to y. So with with passage of time, m x will gradually reduce and m y will gradually increase. So here, what we have done is in the current scenario, how much m x is present? So this much m x is present. So we have found out how many half lives would have taken for this conversion. Question number 7. After 300 days, the activity of a radioactive sample is 5000 disintegrations per second. The activity becomes 2500 disintegrations per second after another 150 days. The initial activity of the sample is Okay, so what is the activity change that is happening? The activity is from the 5000 disintegration per second to 2500 disintegrations per second. That means if you look at this data, the activity is getting reduced to half, right? And how much time it takes to get reduced to half? 150 days. So in 150 days, the activity has reduced to half, which shows that the value of half life is 150 days. Correct? So in this problem, we have to find out the initial activity of the sample. Clear? Now, what was that initial time? Initial time was 300 days before this 5000 disintegration per second, right? Because we are starting from 5000 disintegration per second and after 150 days, it becomes 2500 disintegration per second. Now, before this 150 days before this, what would have been the activity? double of this right because 150 is the half life so half life means the uh, activity would have reduced to half so now we are actually back tracing it so here it is this should be the half so that means the double of this so here it should have been 10,000 disintegrations per second now here read the question carefully after 300 days the activity of a radioactive sample is this that means this time like before this 300 days that was the initial activity of the sample so let's say the initial activity was n naught so after 300 days from n naught so first let's understand the question after 300 days from n naught the uh, the activity was 5000 disintegration per second and again 150 days after this the activity was 2500 disintegration per second so this is the question which is given so we have to find out the value of n naught so we are backtracking it so 150 days is half life so from 5000 again 150 days if we go back then the dis activity would have been 10000 now again if we go back another 150 days which makes it now this 150 and this 150 together makes it 300 days then it would be double of this value that is 20,000 disintegrations per second 
So this is basically the value of n naught. So, so it's very simple. This is the question, right? And here we have just backtraced to find out the initial activity of the sample. So the correct option is A. Question number 8. In a given reaction, which is given here, the radioactive radiations are emitted in the sequence of so what is the sequence? So in order to find out what kind of decay is taking place, we just need to focus on the change in the atomic number and the mass numbers. So let us first look at the first change. From X to Y, the, atom the mass number remains the same and the atomic number increases by 1. So that shows there is a beta decay taking place here. Now let's look at the second step. Here if you see the mass number is reducing by 4 and the atomic number is in reducing by 2 because z plus 1 minus 2 is equal to z minus 1. So that is what is happening here, right? So that means this is alpha decay because in alpha decay mass number reduces by 4 and atomic number reduces by 2. Now let's look at the third step here. The mass number remains the same. Atomic number also remains the same which is which indicates it is gamma decay. So the sequence would be beta alpha gamma. That is option C. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.